Hi, this is Dion from FocusChemistry.com. For today's discussion, we're going to talk about a topic in organic chemistry, the carboxylic acids and derivatives. Now, what are carboxylic acids and derivatives? What are derivatives? Derivatives are compounds that are derived from the acids. So, let's take a look at the structures. This is a carboxylic acid. All right? If you were to change the OH group into a halogen, like a Cl, now, this is uh, acyl chloride. Sometimes it's less known to be uh, acid chloride. Right? And then other derivatives that we learn off in a school is we learn esters. Okay, and then there's another derivative which is called the amides. Now, of course, the amides can have two H's or one R, one H, or two R's. They're all amides. And there's another, another derivative that is not in the syllabus, but it comes out once in a while in exams. Now, this particular guy is called an acid anhydride. Acid anhydride usually comes out in exams in the synthesis of aspirin. Acid anhydride is important for the synthesis of aspirin. So we'll see this sometimes in exam questions, even though this is not taught separately in a, in a, in a syllabus. All right? You notice the acids and derivatives have got one thing in common. What differs is only the group behind here. I'm going to draw this in blue. This is the group that is different. Acid, this group is an OH group. This group is a Cl group, OR group, NH2 group, and a carboxylate group. What is the same is on the left-hand side. This group is the same. It repeats itself. And this group is called the acyl group. Now, we learned before in secondary school that if you have an acid plus an alcohol, of course it can be acidified or alkaline conditions, it can be reversible. What actually happens is that an ester is formed. Now how is this ester formed? I'm going to show it to you using a different way of drawing alcohol. Alcohol is drawn in the other direction. What actually happens is the OH group and the H group comes out to form a water. Right, this is water coming out, and basically the O atom is form a bond, forms a bond with the carbon. So basically, this part here is from the alcohol. This part here is from the acid. Now, if you take a look at this reaction, and someone asks you, what kind of reaction do you think this is? If you take a look at alcohol. Alcohol resembles a lot like water. If water is a band structure, all we need to do is just to replace one H with the R group. Basically, it forms an alcohol. So water basically has got lone pairs, and we know that species with a lot of electron, a high electron density basically are called nucleophiles. So water can serve as a nucleophile in reactions, and if alcohols are the same as water in terms of structure, alcohols should also have two lone pairs, and therefore alcohols should undergo, should be a nucleophile as well, isn't it? So we take a look at what this reaction is all about. It's basically an alcohol molecule coming in, a nucleophile coming in, and a new nucleophile being formed. So this particular reaction, right, the mechanism is basically nothing more than just a nucleophilic substitution mechanism. And this is essentially what is happening when we change from acids into esters, from acyl chlorides into esters, acyl chlorides into amides. The reactions are basically nothing more than just nucleophilic substitution. Okay? Now, if we were to look at the chapter that's before this chapter, now the chapter that's usually taught in schools before this chapter is the carbonyl chapter. Carbonyls are normally taught before this acids and derivatives chapter. If you notice that carbonyls, there are two different kinds. One, I call the ketones. You replace at least one of the R's into a H. This is called an aldehyde. If you take a hard look at carbonyls and the derivatives, you notice something very interesting. And that is, both chapters, the molecules contain both the RCO group. If you take a look here, the RCO group is found in carbonyls. The RCO group is also found in the derivatives and acids. But the funny thing is, the carbonyls undergo reactions like Tolan's reagent, Felling's reagent, 2,4-dinitrophenolhydrazine reactions. Now, 2,4-dinitrophenolhydrazine, a lot of schools will call it short form, they call it 2,4-DMPH. They're all reactions very, very peculiar to carbonyls. In fact, they also undergo nucleophilic addition reactions.
right? However, when you go from the carbonyls into this chapter, the acids and derivatives, you find that the acids and derivatives, even though it contains this RCO group that's very similar to this RCO groups in the carbonyls, all these reactions, are they found in the chapters of acids and derivatives? The answer is no. In fact, the acids and derivatives don't have any of these reactions at all, even though it contains the same groups. And this is something very funny, very interesting about these groups that makes it very different. So what's the difference between these two groups is this. If you notice all the structures, you notice all the structures here of the acids and derivatives, what is so different about these structures compared to those structures is that the first atom that's linked to the CO group, which we see as oxygen, chlorine, oxygen, nitrogen, oxygen, they're all electronegative elements. On top of that, you find that each electronegative elements contain at least one lone pair. Like this. So once you have got electronegative elements with a lone pair coming in, what's going to happen? I'm going to show you an example of esters. This is an ester. What you notice is that this is a region of high electron density. The double bond has got a region of high electron density. And it's separated by a single bond, which has got slightly lower electron density. What's going to happen is that the lone pairs here can basically delocalize across three atoms. Delocalize. Delocalization can happen for this lone pair because the sp sp4 sp3 orbitals right can actually overlap with the carbons sp2 orbitals, okay. And basically, the lone pairs here can delocalize across three atoms, and this is the effect of resonance. Resonance is a very stable structure, and therefore you notice that the acids and derivatives don't undergo addition reactions. Because we undergo addition reactions like what the carbonyls do, we notice the chapter of carbonyls, we learned about this reaction before, that the nucleophile can be a cyanide, and basically this can be a product of the reaction. The double bond disappears, it forms four single bonds. This addition reaction right, cannot happen for these compounds, they undergo substitution reactions instead. Basically because of this lone pair, this first atom next to the carbon right, has got at least one lone pair, which allows delocalization to take place, and that will stabilize this compound. So since it's stable, right, it's going to be very difficult to dis disturb this double bond to change it to form a single bond. So what happens is that in the product, in the product of this nucleophilic substitution reaction, right, I can change it to an NH2, for example. We're just merely changing groups, changing groups. I change the OR group to NH2 groups, but the CO double bond is always retained because this stable structure is hard to destroy. Unlike a carbonyl, the carbonyl CO double bond basically is not so stable as this CO double bond because there's no resonance happening here. Why is there no resonance? Basically because if a carbonyl contains carbon or contains hydrogen, you notice that these carbon and hydrogens don't have any lone pairs for delocalization. Very different from all these atoms here that has got lone pairs for delocalization. Therefore, these compounds are very, very, very stable compared to the carbonyls, and therefore they don't undergo addition reactions, they undergo substitution reactions instead, compared to the carbonyls. And that's the reason why we don't see the same kind of reactions for both chapters, even though the groups look almost the same. All right. So that's all for me today. Thank you for watching, and uh, this is Dion again signing off from FocusChemistry.com. Thank you.